Hi, I'm Gens from Cigarco, and today I will talk about Monoid, a simple but valuable Haskell tab class that's one of the abstractions that Haskell has for putting things together. We'll start with looking at some examples of Monoid-like things in Haskell. Here are two structures, lists with the concatenation operator and numbers with the plus operator. They both are quite similar by nature. Both have an operation that takes two values of the same type and returns one value of the same type. They both have an element, the adding of which doesn't impact the result. In the case of list, this element is the empty list, and in the case of numbers, it is zero. And for both, it doesn't matter in which order you do the operations, if there are multiple of them. As you might have guessed, these similarities are there because both are, in a sense, monoids. So what is a monoid? It's a term we borrow from algebra, and its algebra definition can be explained quite simply, so we'll start with that. In algebra, a monoid is a set of elements with a closed binary operation, meaning an operation that takes two elements of a set and returns an element of the same set. It needs to satisfy two laws. There should be an identity element, which, when combined with another element using the binary operation, will return the same element that we combined it with. And uh, the operation should be associative. When, we, uh, when there are multiple operations, for example, 1 plus 2 plus 3, it doesn't matter in which order you result them. Now, let's look at some examples of monoids and how they fit into this definition. First is natural numbers with the addition operation. In this case, our set is natural numbers, the binary operation is addition, and our identity element is zero. Adding zero to any number will result in that number, and adding is, of course, associative. But that's not the only monoid that natural numbers have. There's also the monoid of natural numbers under multiplication. In this case, the set is still natural numbers, the operation is multiplication, and the identity element is one. Booleans also form monoids with both OR and AND. So here we have monoid with OR. Its identity element is false, appending OR false to any expression using OR, so one changed result. And here is monoid with AND. In this case, the identity element is true. In Haskell, monoid is a type class that provides methods for working with monoids. The type class has three methods. Mempty, which returns an empty monoid, or in other words, the identity element of the monoid. Mapend, which is the binary operation of the monoid. And Mconcat, which appends together a list of monoids. As we can see, monoid is a subclass of semigroup. This means that every monoid needs to have an instance of semigroup. So it's useful to have a look at that type class as well. A semigroup is an algebraic structure just like monoid. The only difference being that it doesn't have an identity element. It implements one operation, which is the same as append. For example, here's how you can use the monoid methods with lists. In Haskell, we usually use the two-angled bracket operator from semigroup instead of using mapend from monoid. But these methods pose some difficulties when working with numbers. This is because there is not a single straightforward instance of monoid for numbers. Haskell doesn't know whether we mean the monoid under multiplication or the monoid under addition. So it just doesn't give us any. To solve this, the data.monoid module offers type wrappers that can signal the intention that we have. For example, we have a sum wrapper, which corresponds to the sum monoid, and we have a product wrapper, which corresponds to the multiplication monoid. We also have some instances for booleans, which I believe to be a bit more useful than the number ones. All represents the and monoid, while any represents the or monoid. While these predefined instances can be useful, it's even more useful to define monoid instance for your own data types. So let's see how you can do that. For this example, we'll use a custom move data type, which represents some kind of a movement in two-dimensional space. It has two fields, one for x and one for y. It has a pretty simple monoid instance where we just uh, sum the corresponding x and y values. And the element in this case is a move that just stays in place, so move zero, zero. To make move a monoid, we first need to create a semigroup instance for it. So we need to define the append operation. In our case, the append operation will just uh, sum the corresponding x and y values. Once we have implemented the semigroup for move, all we need to do to make it a monoid is to implement memty, the identity element. As I previously mentioned, it will be move 0, 0. So now we can use the append operator to compose mews. We can also use memty to refer to a move that stays in place, and we can use mconcat to append a list of moves at once. Pretty neat, right? To sum it up, in this video we have learned about Monoid, the Haskell type class that generalizes the concept of appending or concatenation. We saw how we can implement Monoid for our own data types for easy composition. If you want to watch more videos about other awesome Haskell type classes, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell.